Greg, how are we doing today? Oh, we're doing great. Thank you very much for inviting us. Yeah, of course. Sorry about that confusion, getting you the link over. I'm glad you're able to get in. Yeah. Happy to be here. Happy to have you. Um, so let's just start off with some basic, you know, a basic overview, kind of what, tell us about Artello Bi Biosciences, kind of what, uh, what's your core business model? What are you guys working on? Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. I cut out for a second there, but I, I can hear you now. All right. Well, I'll just rewind the tape, but we're a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company. We're located uh, in San Diego, we have subsidiaries in the UK, Ireland, and Canada. We're entirely focused in on building drugs that focus on or target the endocannabinoid system. We're traded under the on the NASDAQ under the symbol of ARTL. Got it. So, so in, in layman's terms, kind of so our investor audience can understand, what is that uh, targeting the cannabinoid system? What does that entail? What does that mean? Well, all of us in the, uh, are born with an endocannabinoid system, a system of neurotransmitters and receptors that are found throughout the body that sort of bring uh, centralization or healing health to the body in times of assault. So in sleeplessness or in, in uh, symptoms of pain, the endocannabinoid system kicks in, your body makes its own self-made cannabinoids that target certain receptors that turn either the light switch on or off on certain uh, cells and um, and cause an effect in the body. It just so happens that in nature we have cannabis that is made up of a number of chemicals and those chemicals mimic some of the chemicals that we have inside of our body that can also elicit a similar response in the body. We're targeting as a full spectrum company not only modulating endocannabinoids but also bringing chemicals from outside the body to bring uh, restoration to human health. So this is using, um, is, is it similar to CBD or, or is it using CBD in, in the medical field? Yeah, so we have three programs in development. Our lead asset was actually developed in the lab. It's very similar to THC in that it targets the main receptors of the endocannabinoid system, the cannabinoid one and the cannabinoid two receptors. It's different from THC in that it's a full agonist and it's different from THC in that it uh, was, was uh, designed to uh, not penetrate uh, the brain or cross the, into the CNS. So in our hands, we're developing it for, an, um, for uh, appetite stimulation. And you might think, well, most of the time people are interested in appetite suppressing drugs, but there are symptoms such as anorexia uh, from, from let's say cancer or end stage renal disease or children taking uh, adolescent uh, ADHD drugs that uh, cause profound anorexia, and that's, that's an assault on the body. And so restoration of, of appetite is important in these patients. And our drug is a full agonist to the CB1, CB2 receptors, and it, uh, it preferentially hits the targets in the periphery rather than the, the brain. So in the bottom line to folks, you, we can give you the hunger without the high. At least that's the promise of the asset, and we have it in clinical development as we speak. Got it. So I understand you guys have a headquarters in uh, La, ha La Jolla. La Jolla, am I saying that right? California? La Jolla, yeah. La Jolla. Right. But then also uh, R&D, a research and development office in Manchester uh, in the UK, correct? That is correct. So what is, you know, what's the benefit of having kind of that multi-country, you know, an office here and an office overseas? What does that provide for you? Well, besides the fact that we can attract talent from uh, around the globe and the Besides the fact that we um, are, are work pretty much 24/7, uh, anytime the sun's up, uh, uh, the, the company's working. We um, we have some access to some really top talent that came out of uh, AstraZeneca, and we're located in the former AstraZeneca facility with a team that came out of AstraZeneca. So you get the very best of a global pharmaceutical company working at a small biotech like uh, like Artello that has us there. And so it's the makeup of the, the organization that really led us to, to have these uh, multiple offices around the world. We also take advantage of certain uh, economic benefits in certain uh, countries. So our subsidiary in, the, in Canada, for example, allowed us to qualify for a grant for matching funds from the Canadian government that helps stretches our dollar. And we uh, participate in an R&D uh, credit with the um, Canadian, uh, with sorry, with the UK government such that relative to expenses in the United States, 
it would be uh, about 30% less uh, to do the uh, work in out of um, out of uh, uh, the UK. Got it. Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, that's cool that you have that. You can kind of pull from two different talent pools, one over here and one over there. Um, so yeah, and I just wanted to I wanted to answer your earlier question as to whether or not we're working with uh, CBD. We actually have the first and only issued composition of matter patent on our composition of CBD. It's in the form of a co-crystal. We solved a couple of the inherent challenges with CBD. And globally, we're the first company ever to get a patent, a composition of matter patent on CBD. Some people say that's like patenting lettuce. How did you in, in fact do that? But we did that in the form of a co-crystal that improves drug-like properties um, that may have a benefit from what we sandwich it with. And that's another plant extract called uh, uh, tetramethylperazine. But the bottom line is uh, we're, we're able to now develop CBD for large diseases like PTSD, um, for which other companies have uh, avoided because they're looking for orphan drug protection or some other form of protection to go into the marketplace, maybe by the, the, uh, the delivery system they have. But we actually have composition of matter protection, a patent, an issued patent, and it expires at the end of December or in December of 2038. So that's a lot of room for us to develop a medicine to treat really important big diseases uh, with a form of CBD that uh, we think, uh, uh, and, and it'll bear out in our clinical development, hopefully, but uh, that, that will offer a real benefit for people suffering from the anxiety and sleeplessness, for example, with PTSD. Got it. And so for companies that are going for that orphan drug designation, um, what, what does that entail? That's for more rare diseases or... It is. There's over 7,000 rare diseases, and I've been in rare diseases in my <clears throat> 35 years of biopharmaceutical drug development commercialization uh, uh, career, and I, I laud people for going after rare diseases. In fact, most of cancers are, are rare diseases, and it's, it's an important area. But we can't also leave the big diseases behind. The reason people often go after the rare and orphan diseases is there is the Orphan Drug Act that allows for uh, for example, in the United States, seven years of exclusivity in which the FDA will not approve the same drug for the same indication. And so in, if you can't get protection around your drug or it's weak protection around your drug, often people will go after rare and orphan diseases to provide themselves that seven year protection. In Europe, it's 10 years. But what we felt was important is the 20 year protection that you can get from composition of matter. And now that gives us a lot of room to uh, invest in clinical development with our asset and then to uh, um, perhaps um, have investors enjoy the benefit of a drug that has a long patent life. Understood. All right, Greg. So again, in, in, in layman's terms, if you could explain what would be the benefit of, say, someone who is suffering from PTSD to using uh, a drug from Artello as opposed to maybe say some of the, just the regular medical marijuana or CBD that you can go buy, you know, in, in a dispensary? Yeah, so <clears throat> there's a number of potential uh, real benefits there. So you, to understand that, you, it's important to understand what our drug is. Our drug is a co-crystal of CBD. That A co-crystal is basically a straight jacket that holds a CBD in a particular shape. CBD suffers from uh, polymorphism, and I know I'm supposed to put this in layman's term. That's a fancy word for meaning poly, many morphs or shapes. And just like water or H2O can be in a liquid form, a solid form, a, 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 an ice cube, or a gas, and I know that's a temperature change, but it's a good analogy to say something in nature can remain the same thing, in this case H2O, but it be in different forms. Inherently, CBD, whether it's extracted or isolated from a plant or it's made in the lab, it has inherent solid polymorphism. So if you want to put CBD in a pill, you control for the different shapes. Think of snowflakes in different shapes. We're able to isolate a certain shape by creating a co-crystal. And what does that do? That provides better uniformity. It provides um, more consistency and exposure. And when there's drug-to-drug -drug interactions, which there are with CBD, it's a powerful 
inhibitor of enzymes in the liver that metabolize other drugs and they can get drug interactions. It's important to very precisely deliver a drug, especially in, in diseases or in conditions like PTSD, where maybe concomitant drugs are, are, are taken. So that's point number one is that the, the dialing in and fine tuning of the drug is believed to be better when you control for the polymorphism associated uh, with, a, with a chemical or a substance like uh, a, a CBD. Um, the, the second uh, advantage is, is that we pair this with, or the straight jacket is a plant extract that's known in Asia uh, to be a powerful neuroprotectant. It has its own uh, preclinical data supporting its use in PTSD. And so maybe you get the uh, benefit of these two active chemicals together. We'll have to see that in, in, clinical, uh, uh, in, in clinical development. And, and it's important then for drug interactions, for consistency of exposure, for to dialing it in. And if you think about CBD alone, CBD is used often, CBD rich cannabis is used from sufferers of PTSD and anxiety and sleeplessness uh, affect those with, uh, with PTSD. And we believe our drug really will have a key advantage there. Got it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really interesting. I can, now I can kind of see the difference of what the benefit would be for going to a drug that y'all are making versus just going to, uh, to a place where you can buy some regular CBD or, uh, marijuana um i see someone in the, in the chat is asking a good question about so if if you're focusing a lot on ptsd do you have any deals with the department of defense to try to uh, treat some veterans or is that something down the line in the future you hope to do yeah so we do have uh, grant money that has come into the company and we're aware of the dod's uh grant uh, money as well we're a little bit early for that uh, uh today and so we're advancing the program pharmacologically in a, in a study in rats and models of PTSD. We're doing some PK work uh, as well, as well as some other cell line data and a different indication. So uh, as we mature the company, we will look at uh, a Department of Defense uh, added uh, dollars. We're also looking in, uh, at uh, potential partnerships with other companies. I think others have become very impressed with what we've done here over at Artello. Any companies, uh you know, in mind that you, you care to share today about potential partnerships? Or? I, I can't can't get go down that road. I can just say that we're like every other pharmaceutical company. We're in active discussions with people at all times. Got it. So I do have um, a little presentation pulled up. Um, I don't know if you can see the screen, but do you can you explain to me what's going on in these pictures with these uh, mice or rats here? Well, this is really impressive data. And if you understand that um, this is uh, one of our other programs. So we talked about our drug that's like THC, that it's a full agonist of, of the cannabinoid one and cannabinoid two receptors. We talked about our proprietary CBD. This is our third program in development. It was originally developed with NIH money uh, from, uh, well, from the government and the team at Stony Brook University. And it's an inhibitor to a protein that does a number of things. It regulates uh, your level of endocannabinoids in the body. And so they were originally developing it as a pain drug. We think it's very, very interesting there. But when we saw this data <clears throat> in cancer, <clears throat> excuse me, it was unprecedented, the, um, the, the, the results that we saw here. So this is um, in a model of highly metastatic, castration-resistant prostate cancer. You wouldn't wish that on anybody in the planet. And so uh, these poor mice were given this uh, cancer and then offered the protection of our inhibitor to this protein that regulates the feeding and growth of, of cancer through uh, a, a growth factor that causes new blood vessel formation and the feeding of nutrients and migration of cancer uh, cells in the body. Versus the control mice, the control mice are not given any protection. And the images of the control mice in just 30 days, you can see how much the cancer grew as lit up on the images on the screen versus the images of the mice at the bottom of the screen in which they had our inhibitor, uh, inhibitor dosed over a 30-day uh, period. There's another drug on the market today. It's called Avastin. It's from a wonderful uh, group of folks up in Genet at Genentech and, 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 and Roche. 
that have this program in development. But to my knowledge today, a vast and the leading drug, multi-billion dollar drug, does not have single end agent uh, activity as represented by the first generation compound here. We've actually gone from through first, second, and now third generation compounds and um, that are more potent and more specific to this fatty acid binding uh, protein five and um, as an inhibitor. And we're very excited about bringing that into the clinic uh, next year. Beautiful. That's impressive. Um, so Greg, we, we do only have like a minute left. I'm, I'm trying to see what else do, do investors have to look forward to? I mean, I know we have some former AstraZeneca, you know, really smart employees. You're, you're transcontinental. You got places, you got a, a headquarters in California as well as the UK. Um, what else do investors have to look forward to for the rest of 2021 or even looking further down the road in 2022? Well, I think that is, is what's very good about our tellos that uh, we're well capitalized to get to the milestones that are up in front of us for the next uh, year and, and perhaps beyond. Um, and in that period of time, we should have the first readout of the clinical data from our CARES study. That stands for the Cancer Appetite Recovery Study that's ongoing right now in the UK. And that readout of data is expected between now and the, and, and the end of the year. So getting an investment in front of that, it seems to be a, uh, a, a wise choice. The full data is expected to come out before summer uh, next year. That's one. Number two, our two preclinical programs will release data as it becomes available. Um, I know that there's some upcoming uh, data releases at the end of this month at a, at a conference that's uh, the International Cannabinoid Research Society meeting. So we'll get data out on the two preclinical programs as well. So well capitalized. Uh, a company, one of maybe only five that are up on the NASDAQ that have taken this pharmaceutical approach with a rich patent estate uh, going after uh, really an, un, a treasure trove of drug development opportunity in this endocannabinoid system. And I can't wait to see what the future holds, not only from Artello, but from all the others that are making a wise investment in this endocannabinoid system to improve human health. Yeah, I mean, it seems like something, you know, very fascinating field of medicine, something we as investors have to keep our eye on because um, at least to me, it seems like there are a lot of really serious uh, medical problems, diseases that can be treated with some of these, uh, you know, CBD like medicines that have not a lot of serious side effects. Well, we want to thank the uh, the Benzinga team. And if for those that want more information, we have a website up. It's artellobio.com. The bios, the backgrounds, the, a little bit more about the strategies and the programs is available on our website. We would invite people to go to that. We also, I would just like to care to, in closing, say I have made some forward-looking statements. And we would ask all investors to um, consider the risks and opportunities of investing in a company like Artello Biosciences. Beautiful. Well, I appreciate it, Greg. And thank you for coming on. I hope we get to get you back on again soon. You know, as, as Artello has some developments, maybe you're getting ready to announce a partnership deal. You can just reach out to us and we'd be happy to, to have you back on. I've been very impressed with how Benzinga has grown. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur myself. This company was started with nothing four years ago and, uh, and here we are today. So I applaud your entrepreneurship and I'm thankful that we had the opportunity to join you today. Well, thank you. Thank you, Greg. We appreciate that. Yeah, I don't know if you heard before you came on, but our CEO just won a uh, little Entrepreneurship of the Month award for, for Michigan. So it's, it's it, that's exciting. So, um, you know, we're proud of what we do over here. And I'm sure as you are as well over at our, our Tello. Yeah, congratulations to Jason. And as he adequately and appropriately said, it's a team. And I hopefully have done justice to our team here at our Tello because it really is a strong team as well. Yeah. And like I said, I know we'll be keeping our eye on it. I'm sure other investors will as well, because um, it's just exciting stuff. I mean, to be able to tackle a serious issue like PTSD would be huge for, for our society. Absolutely. All right, Greg, we'll enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, as I said, hope to talk soon. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye.